I was the outcast that they would put in front of the class and point to me and they say, don't do what Bowles does. He's going nowhere. I probably make more money than anyone that's ever graduated my high school. I can actually jump off the hamster wheel and be done if I wanted to. And that's what it made me realize, like, it is just a game. Like, you are just going for the next level because you want to. It really comes down to people's thoughts. 100%. Your thoughts turn into your beliefs. Your beliefs turn into assumptions. Your assumptions turn into expectations. So if someone who's always negative in the dumps of, I'm poor, I can't afford this, now you are the poor person because that's a belief. I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I don't think I ever will be. But I'm also very happy happy with where I'm at and grateful with where I'm at. But mm -hmm. most people don't realize it takes 10 years of doing the same thing before you have consistent income coming in. Welcome back to the Shane Holmes podcast. Today we have John Bowles. John is CEO of one of the fastest growing boutique media firms, Aventive and Credi, which is one of the faster growing uh, credit card processing companies out here in California, in the West Coast area. Uh, so John, thank you so much for coming Thanks on today. Thanks for having bro. me, my man. So John pulls up today, little to my knowledge, with two McLaren 720s. Like I thought like he'd, he'd be coming in like, you know, a cool like rental car 570. I thought he was just like, kind of visiting here, but he just moved here, bought a sick house in Laguna, and then he pulls up with two modded 720s, and I'm just like... Yeah, mine's slightly, but Miguel's is is full balls to the wall, full yeah. 1016 kit, everything, yeah. Yeah, he's got the Brixton wheels. What kind of wheels are these? Uh, these are Novatech. Novatech, yeah. These really fit the car. Yeah. It's funny. So one of the things that we were talking about right before this is how they're sort of like no end game with cars, because John is saying that he's thinking about buying a Ferrari F8, I am thinking about buying a McLaren, which I actually didn't tell you yet. And then, or potentially an SVJ in like six months or a year. And there's just no end to it. Like, you well, can, and, and yeah, the group we roll around with, it's all SVJs and seven, eight hundred thousand dollar cars. And they're scratching their heads of like, what's next? Yeah. Cause to go from a next, you go into the hypercar, the hypercar is at 1.2, 1.5. We're all in our late twenties, early thirties, 1.2 on a car kind of ruffles the stomach a little bit in a, in a, in yeah. a different type of feeling than, I mean, even a five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar car is crazy. And the average person can't afford that. So everyone's super grateful, but 1.2 is a whole different, it's a different level. Dude. Yes. So let's say you go SVJ. What are you, are your buddies talking about at that 1.2 level? So I believe the 918 has been discussed. The Senna has been discussed. Um, there's, some Bugattis that I think you can get in what the twos. I don't think they're I don't at, track the Bugatti market. No, yeah, idea. I don't think they're at the one point five level. But there, bro, there's really not much after the SVJ. There really is. I think isn't. there's going to be some hypercars coming out from Ferrari and Lamborghini that are going to have the one point five. Like we were at Ferrari today, and they had a eight twelve. I forgot special. Uh, the eight. The uh, it was a two and a half million. Yeah, two and a half million dollar car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like fully spec to the nines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like, but that doesn't even come close to an SVJ. When we roll around OC and Newport, it's funny if <laughs> our buddy Cossum, if you have one SVJ, people hate you because it's so loud. But when you're rolling around with three SVJs, <laughs> everyone and their mom is filming you. Kids are taking photos. Grandparents are taking photos. Like it's a whole, we look like a bag of Skittles, like the lime green, red, yellow, yeah. white, you know, green, all these different things. But it's really cool. The fact of not the fact that like our friend group has the most amazing cars. They're literally the most amazing guys. Yeah. Like the awesome. most amazing humans and, and meeting them, you know, a couple weeks ago, moving to Laguna and Newport was like life changing. Cause I just left my friends group and my family back in Arizona, came out here, didn't really know anyone. And now it's like, I've known these guys for like 10 years. That's so awesome. that's the cooler part than the cars. And what industry are most of the guys in that are that? So are... I'm obviously in branding and marketing and credit card processing. I have, you know, Miguel owns a marketing agency. He's also in the real estate, you know, space. We have some guys that own franchise restaurants, section eight housing, um, Amazon automation, but like actually crushing the Amazon game, like not, not like the, yeah. the guru, yeah, you know, the, the coaches, coach quick. Yeah. Um, we have another buddy who owns a super successful vape, vape company that got into the market at 2012. There's mm -hmm. a couple other guys that, um, our buddy owns, uh, an auto, you know, a car shop that does all the mod modifications. It's one of the top in OC. Um, so yeah, it's just a variety of industries. It's always so helpful to get time around people like you and 
people like your friend group that you're talking about because getting young minds together that really want to grow, like there's just something that happens that forces you to grow more. And I don't know what it is, but... And this group is like that on steroids. Is it? Oh, you're only going to get the F8. Why don't you get the this? You can afford it. Like they'll do that all day in our group chat. And it's like, oh, okay, I need to close another deal. Need to, because our, our model is like, we, you never live beyond your means. So like my model, like, could I go afford a this or a that? Absolutely. But the way that my brain works is I need new revenue, new business, new investment money to come in to pay for that. Not what's in the bank account and what's not coming in monthly. Yeah. So like I take more calculated approaches to investments, especially mm -hmm. with something I don't need. Like I do not need this McLaren. It's not my life and income is not, you know, depending on this. Mm -hmm. Right. So I like to have new streams of revenue or income. If I'm going to go to an SVJ and spend 700 grand, I need to have a new project or a new investment stream or a new something that's coming in to pay for that. And that's how I've never lived beyond my means. Yeah. That, that's like the biggest differentiator, I think, between people that last and don't. It's not that hard to get approved to buy a yeah. $400,000 car. Like, it, like you need to have good credit, but yeah. you can walk into a Lamborghini dealership and I've seen it. Like they'll just approve you yeah. and send you out with a car. But the people that make it are the ones that are using well, bros, not their active income. Especially to... when you don't come for much and especially when you've lost it a couple times over. Yeah. I've, I've lost over a million dollars from best friends, bad investments, uh, investing in companies, getting screwed over. That's a million dollars cash. You mm -hmm. know, I believe, you know, I was up to, I think, 31 or 32 years old. So like a million dollars, most people don't see that. I lost that by mm -hmm. just trusting the wrong people, you know, things like that. So like once you've gone through those things and you've had your back against the wall of like, holy shit, I need to climb out of this hole. You act a lot differently when it comes to finance, to money. Like, I don't like to say I hoard cash, but like I'm much more cash is king. Yeah. And how can I invest in, in assets that bring me more income and bring me more revenue versus the new hottest trend? Like there's so many guys that we know that are making, not even kidding, a million a month just on crypto plays. I won't wow. touch it because I got burned a couple years ago, right? So yeah. it's like I stay in my lane on what I know. I know brand building, I know marketing, I know finance, and I know real estate. And I sink all my money into those streams outside of like the stock market and, and some crypto holdings and things like that. But I stick to what I know. Mm -hmm. And I know that like I, I'm not going to screw myself over. I know that if, if I'm one of the top in a certain industry like branding and marketing, I know that if I can build and scale seven, eight, nine figure brands in my sleep, I'm never going to be out of business because everyone's going to keep needing marketing. Everyone's going to keep needing, you know, branding websites, SEO, digital ads, everything. Like even when AI takes over at some point, like you're still going to need to have someone who's a specialist. Yeah. A hundred percent. What stood out to me is that you play games, you know, you're going to win. And that's, that's what a lot of the successful people that I've had on the podcast do. And that's something that I've always been like a really big fan of. I invest like 90% of my money's in real estate. Yeah. Cause makes I, sense. I, I know how to win. I, am I, can I win in the stock market? Yeah, I can do okay. I can. Now, hit. what type of real estate do you invest in, or like what's I, your I specialty? Buy, uh, I buy single family homes and I convert them into three units. Interesting. And that's my that's my niche. Okay, in the California area, in Cal specifically in Ventura County, and because the landlord laws are a little bit more friendly, but I buy <laughs> single family. Yeah, I was I, about to say <laughs> I buy single family homes and and I build two ADUs on them. And uh, that's how I'm still finding cash flow in like a kind of fucked yeah, up volatile like, market. market. Yeah. And um, that, that's just what makes sense to me. And I, I've done it so many times that like, I know exactly what it's going to rent for. I know exactly what my expenses are. And I don't, it's not like I'm running out there like a bat out of hell. I just kind of find the ones that work yeah. and just cherry pick them and, and, and just keep those. Which ones. is super smart. Yeah. I mean, like I, I just look at it like you, I know I'm going to win. I'm there's massive tax advantages there's cash flow. Like I'm going to win there in the stock market. I have money in the stock market. It's not like I have yeah. nothing in there. I keep that on automation though. I'm, yeah, I'm not sitting there scratching my head. Like I wonder which one's going to pop up. I, I, I'm a big numbers guy and super OCD. So I look at like the trajectory of like, what have I done over the past three years? Which one was the winner? Like if I'm going to keep adding in the same amount every single week, which five or six should I put them in on autopilot where I know I'm going to at least get an eight to 10% return. Yeah. Yeah. I exact same way. I put it in. I don't even look at it. Like I, Neither do I throw it in there. I just don't, it's not that I don't care. It's that I don't want to look at Only it. Only time I know is when my CPA makes me file at the end of the year of like, what stocks did you purchase? Like send me your report. I'm like, Oh, that's what we have now. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't check the account. I don't check. It just, it just keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. That I, and that's the right way to do it. I think that 
overthinking it and investing into assets where you're like trying to do something cool. And I have tons of buddies who are very smart at that. That's not me. I'm great with finance. I'm great with investing. I'm great with numbers. And I, I know enough to be dangerous, but I'm not trying to act like I know that I'm a day trader and I know all these tricks of the trade. Like I have guys that crush that, but that's all that they do. Yeah. Yeah. And they study it like we study real estate branding and they're the best at what they do. Mm -hmm. So I can't compare myself to someone that's in the market becoming Michael Jordan at it. Like I'm going up against those guys and those guys don't even compete to Wall Street. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, uh, one of my good friends, like kind of similar thing. All he does is trade shit coins. Yeah. That's it. And he crushes it. I mean, I follow some guys in Miami and he's like, Oh, I had a $200,000 morning. I'm done for the day. Going to take the kids <laughs> to the park, drive my SVJ. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's crazy. But we're on the same exact page. I don't do that. That's not my strength. I'm and not I don't interested want, in that being And I don't strength. want to sit there and be like, well, should I switch something else? I'm like, I'll get there one day, right? Not at the 200K a day level. I'm, I'm not there right now, but yeah. like, you'll get there one day. And I'm sure you love what you do. You have to find out. I don't believe in you need to find what your passion and go 100%. Like, I think you need to try a bunch of different things and one thing will stick and like, you have to love what you do. Mm -hmm. But like, I couldn't imagine of us sitting behind a computer screen and like going up and like with the market, like I, that wouldn't, I wouldn't find enjoyment out of that. Neither of us have that personality type. I can tell that. No, like, I'd, rather pay, that. I'd rather pay someone a quarter million dollars a year to like do that for me yeah. versus me have to learn. And then I'm doing that all day, but some people love it. Yeah. 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 So what, what brought you from Arizona out to Newport area? So that's a great question. So originally we were launching a marketing or we were launching an office for my marketing agency, Aventive out in West Hollywood. Obviously not many people like living in, in West Hollywood right now. Um, so I, I kind of came over to Newport and saw the area. I'm like, wow, this is absolutely beautiful. Some people months, uh, a year ago moved from Scottsdale over to Newport and I kept seeing their stories. I'm like, wow, like the beaches, the town, everything looks amazing. And just to be fully transparent, I felt like I hit a plateau in Arizona. I felt like once you get to a certain level, socially, financially, et cetera, et cetera, if there's not much around town that's pushing you to get to that next level and you're kind of, I don't want to say at the top of that food chain because there's guys and girls there that obviously do way better. Um, but I didn't find much motivation anymore personally. And it's a me thing, not a population thing yeah. or a people thing because I have the most amazing friends and family there. Um, but I just, I wasn't motivated anymore. I used to drive down like Exeter and Lafayette, which are the two nicest streets in, in Arcadia, right down the road from, from the house that I just purchased. And the houses didn't motivate me anymore. I'm like, okay, I, I could afford that next year, two years or this or that. And it's like, I want something that's out of reach. I want something that pushes me over, pushes me out of bounds. I want something that's new and scary and fearful. And I was like, okay, what's, what's the number one area I can move into the most expensive area with the best movers and shakers in the world outside of like New York and Miami. I'm like, okay, that's LA orange County area. And I came out here, I want to say three months ago and looked at properties throughout, uh, orange County, Newport Laguna, and absolutely fell in love with Laguna. Like it's it, a wonder, like that area is dude. Sick. And I'm at the top of Victoria beach. So like my patio, like I've, I've obviously shown it a million times on Instagram, but the patio overlooks up to the whole water. Like you can hear the waves crashing up. I, yeah. I've seen shooting stars going over waking up in your dream home and your dream location in your dream city. There's nothing else quite like it. It's, it's hard to beat. It. I finally feel like I'm home. And it sucks to say that because I have so much family and friends, like ride or die homies back in Arizona. And, and I, I love all of them. I love the city. It's great. I still own all my real estate back home. I'll probably never sell it. I'll, I'll keep buying more, but there's something about OC that just hits different. Yeah. I mean, when you go, when you're like, we'll be driving to dinner and all of a sudden, like, okay, like all of our buddies want to link up. There's three SVJs. There's a wide body Urus. There's multiple 720s. Like we're rolling around with three to $6 million of cars on a Wednesday night mm -hmm. on a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. That's you sick. can't yeah. say that in Arizona, right? I'd be the only McLaren in sight for God knows how long I stand out like a yeah. sore thumb. You know, it gets to be 120 degrees in the summer. So there was a multitude of reasons why I moved. And I, I I'll say that, you know, the friend group that you know, I, I met a couple weeks ago on top of just, you know, some investments that are panning out deals that are panning out. I don't ever see leaving Cali. Yeah. And I'll probably split time like 50, 50, 51% Arizona for tax purposes, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Uh, but, but dude, I'm home. My group yeah. that I kick it with the car, like I'm finally home. That's a great feeling. But what, what you said is like, when you start feeling that, that plateau, whether it's in your life, in your business, even if it doesn't make sense financially to go outside of your plateau, 
you have to do it. Like I'm call it guy math. (laughs) (laughs) Guy math. I'm going to buy this car and it's going to make me more money. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Like I, um, I recently started my real estate firm and we hired two new agents today and and they asked me why I started the firm. And I was like, honestly, it, it was just time. Like financially, I'm losing like six grand a month compared to my position before. Yeah. It costing me an extra six grand, but it didn't fit the long-term vision. Exactly. And I was itchy. And I knew, my brain knew that like it was time to grow the brand and put the brand on top of the brokerage instead of the other way around. Yeah. And um, the best things happen when you move out of that complacent zone of like, yo, I've hit that yeah. plateau. So I'm, it's awesome to hear that you acted on that and actually did it and moved to California and now you're happier than ever. Yeah. It, what's, what's funny is I'm, and, and the guys will laugh because they know, but I'm huge into manifesting. I've been doing it since I was four years old. I can, I've been able to close my eyes and, and dream and, and watch movies inside my head and literally create it. And obviously like with the compounding effect and like working 15 years at the same thing, like obviously it gets easier for guys like us to make money, buy cars, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But like, I kid you not, I didn't know I was getting a McLaren. I didn't know I was getting the house in Laguna. I manifested, I was, I was meditating for about an hour, hour and a half one night. And all of a sudden the dream or like, you know, manifesting led to me driving up to PCH in a, in a drop top McLaren going up to a house in the Hills, but it wasn't this car and it wasn't that house, but it was, but it, yeah, 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 yeah. And it happened two weeks after that's crazy. Our buddy. It's funny because I met Miguel at a coffee shop. I wasn't supposed to go to that coffee shop. I wasn't supposed to bring the McLaren. I was going to bring the G wagon, but I brought the McLaren. I left the key on the table and Miguel's like, bro, is that your 720? I said, yeah. He's like, I just got one a month ago too. Like we should hang out. (laughs) <laughs> and then all of a sudden we've been inseparable like brothers, like, you know, meet the whole friends group, the car group, et cetera. And one of our buddies cost him with the yellow SVJ. I told them a couple of weeks into, into knowing them, but I'm like, I'm like, bro, like I'm, I literally used your video of you getting the SVJ the first night and driving up to PCH. I played it every night for a month before I moved to Laguna. That's and I wild. had no idea who he was. Didn't look at his page. Didn't know who he was. I just saw an SVJ driving up to the PCH. And I was like, damn. Yeah. So what are the odds that synergistically all of these people are linking up, all the dots are getting connected, all the, like there's something big on its way. I can feel it between our friends group, between what's going on. Like I have this feeling and it's, it's not by chance. I was supposed to move out here. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I fully agree with that. Like when, when things connect, they just fucking connect. Like when it makes sense, it just, it just happens. There's a country club here called Sherwood. Mm-hmm. And my my friend's dad brought me out there when I was like 16, and it was always a goal of mine to be there. I just never thought like I never realistically knew how or 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 at what age or whatever. And like this year, the firm started, and then like we joined Sherwood last week, and it's exactly what you said: the compound of time just happening, and then you envisioning what you want out of it. Yeah. At, after a certain amount of time, it's like magical things start to happen. And it's really hard to put your finger on it and to kind of understand like why, what exactly you did to deserve to be the person that gets those things. But God is good, man. I don't know if you're religious, but for me, like it's just, yeah. it's awesome. Well, and I, I've known this for a while, but uh, I started reading a couple of different books that kind of put it into perspective, God, universe, energy, et cetera, what, regardless of what someone's beliefs are, is it really comes down to people's thoughts. Your thoughts turn into your beliefs. Your beliefs turn into assumptions. Your assumptions turn into expectations. So if someone who's always negative in the dumps of, oh, I'm, I'm ugly or I'm, I'm poor, I can't afford this. Now you are the poor person because that's a belief. So you are going to assume that, oh, I'm always going to be poor. So you're expecting people to treat you like the poor person Mm -hmm. or I have no money in my account or, or you get cheated on. Every guy's a cheater. Every girl's a cheater. You're literally going to be dealing with cheaters for the rest of your (laughs) life because that's the storyline you've created. Yeah. So there's no difference between us, the average person, a billionaire, a celebrity, an athlete. It's all what that person thinks about every day. What do you believe about yourself? I look in the mirror from a, a, a confident, but still humble standpoint Cause my motto is like humble enough to know that you can lose it all tomorrow, but confident enough to, to know that you can rebuild it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, look yeah, in yeah. the mirror and for the, it's probably been the past five years. Cause I, I went through a lot of healing trauma and, and deep work and, and inner work and things like that. But I look in the mirror and regardless of what's in the driveway or not, I, I love the person I'm looking at because I'm thinking positively. I'm believing positivity. Like I've been this way my whole life and I've always had teachers friends, just people putting me down and like, you're never going to get the Ferrari. You're never going to live in the mansion. You're never going to do this and that. 
And like, I can guarantee you, like I probably make more money than anyone that's ever graduated my high school. Yeah. And I was the outcast that they would put in front of the class and point to me and they say, don't do what Bowles does. He's going nowhere in life. Yeah. For years. But I believed that they were false. I believed that I, I could do whatever I wanted to become. Mm -hmm. So that's really the biggest thing I've learned over this past year. It's becoming obsessive with what you believe in and building that brand, building that relationship. Like I'm obsessive in every area of my life. When I'm dating someone, me being a friend, like you call me in the middle of the night, my, my phone's usually on airplane mode, but if I am, yeah. if, if it's not in the middle of the night, like I'm there, yeah. I show up 110% for every category of my life. And most people don't do that. Yeah. That, that's very factual. Like most people don't go in on something like when they start it, they don't just go like, this is what I'm doing and this is going to be successful because there's no other way. Yeah. Like my brain does not fuck option B. I don't have option B's when I, when I start something, it's just, this is what is happening and maybe it won't work out, but I don't have an option B. Yeah. I'm going to find a way to, to get around yeah. it or just to get there. And then it'll, it'll morph into like, like a bullet point a or one or two yeah, or three yeah, and like yeah. this investment, that investment, but you don't deviate from a yes. I'm yeah, the yeah, same yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love hearing that. Yeah. I, I had like a 2.2 in high school, like a barely skated by. Yeah, mine was a two or two point two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad. And like, I, I never had, but I always knew like, this isn't, this isn't for me, but something else is. Well, now knowing what I know about the schooling system and like the curriculum and how it got put together, financial structure of, of the U.S. economy, I'm like, okay, like no wonder why they wanted to sustain class for eight hours a day. And they don't want people like us to really like. They want you eating KFC, Chick Fil A, getting a nine to five, doing the things that the government is able to control, the food sources, the. Like, I mean, I won't even get into politi po politics and do down that whole wormhole, yeah. but I've cracked the code and I know a lot of people have of actually researching, like, where does the school system come from? Who started it? Where, wh what is the U S dollar back? But now when did the gold standard change? When did like, people aren't asking what fractional banking is like all these banks are going out of business. Why are they going out of business? Why is the, like, I've gone down the wormhole in every possible scenario. Yeah. And once you understand like the, the code of everything, that makes life even more fun. Cause I'm like, Oh, if it's all fake, then we might as well turn the level up of this video game. And like, let's <laughs> yeah. just go all out. Cause if it's fake, if money and dollars don't really exist and it's just fictitious money, let's just run it up ethically and morally speaking, obviously like yeah. I only invest in things that I know that I know very well. And I know it's, it's, it's above water. I'm not the guy that's going to make a quick grab or a quick money. Like I'm all long-term monthly retained revenue assets, investments that are down the road. A lot of people lately, they're just so hungry to get the McLaren, get the Ferrari, and they'll do quick money grabs. Or they'll do something in crypto or this or that. And it's like, that's not my style. Well, it never works. No. Like, I've never I've never seen someone at scale, at least. It might work short term. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I've, I've never seen somebody or people on average at scale have fast money work. Like, A, usually the money just never comes. Like, they just, it just that, that money that they're going for, it just doesn't exist because it's not backed by true belief and, and hard yeah. work. But if they do get it, like, okay, what's next? What's after that? And I guess you could say the same for us with like, okay, whatever we're think the same way. What's, what's next. But if you're always going for a fast dollar, it's just like, what do you believe in? Exactly. What, what's the, I think that things succeed when there's like a, a belief system behind them and, and going for the fast dollar just doesn't. Well, and dude, it work. takes time. Like, everyone's like, well, dude, you're so successful. Like how long did like, it, it, it seems like an overnight success. And, and let me just state, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I don't think I ever will be, but I'm also, I don't want to say content, very happy with where I'm at and grateful with where I'm at. But mm -hmm. most people don't realize it takes 10 years of doing the same thing before you have consistent income coming in before you understand like Dude, I learn so much every three months, every six months, every year. Like, you know, we were talking about before, I read 75 to 100 books a year and I don't need to. Financially, I could keep things going how they're going and not have to worry about much for the rest of my life if I, and if I didn't want to keep growing, right? Yeah. But that's not me. I could have a billion dollars in the bank account and I would still work just as hard. I would read just as many books. I would go to the gym just as hard. The money doesn't change how I view life. Life to me is a game. Yeah. And I want to keep getting to that next level. I will be 70 years old trying to get to that next level. It's <laughs> yeah. just how I'm built. I, I fully agree. It's just the, it's the chase. 
It's it's the Michael game Jordan, of Kobe Bryant. You just won the championship, Kobe. What are you doing? Coming back tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. championship again. They're like, what? Like you're not gonna go party? He's like, celebrate what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a, I had a guy on my podcast not too long ago that like really kind of changed the way I I looked at things. He was like, well, you could it pretty much what you just said. You could stop working right now. Like the fact that okay, maybe I wouldn't be able to live in this house and I would have to go live in like one of my rental properties or something yeah. that's not quite as expensive. And maybe I would have to budget a little bit less every month. Of course. But he made me realize I can actually jump off the hamster wheel and, and, and be done if I wanted to. And that's what it made me realize. Like it is just a game. Like you are just going for the next yeah. level because you want to. And that really lit a fire under my ass for some reason. I realized like, okay, we're playing with house money. Like let's, let's go. Like let's, I'm, I'm investing aggressively into the business, aggressively in the staff. Like we're just, why, why the fuck not? <laughs> like, well, and, and now you're at the point, you know, like I was talking to Miguel earlier today, like, you know, we're coming up on 20 employees, uh, you know, just at, at, just at my agency. That's not credit. That's not real estate. That's not anything else I have going on. Yeah. And it's like, I have not only 20 mouths to feed, they have significant others. Like half my team are married. They've been married to their partner for eight to 10 years. They have kids. Like we have, you know, roughly, I would say on average, like 25 to 50, maybe 60 clients a year. All those clients are counting on us. And some of these clients are massive clients that have 10,000 employees, you know, 300 locations. They have 80, 80 employees per location. So it's like, then all the customers are counting on them. So the way I look at my life, like you're going to, you know, start realizing like, damn, like it's not even about the car or the, this it's like, how can I work so hard? My team member gets a raise. How can I work so hard? Yeah. I, I pay to have everyone come to Arizona or come to California. We meet for the first time since everything's remote. Right. So yeah. it's, it's now not so much about me. So like, even if I could slow down and live a, a comfortable life, I haven't paid my parents' houses off yet. I haven't gotten that my dad his dream Mercedes yet. I haven't done the things for my siblings. Like, like that's, I'm after legacy and I'm after like what this next phase of my life is what can I do for all the people that are around me? Not just like, what am I doing for myself? Yeah. Cause yeah, I'm very happy that. with where I'm at, but it's like, I want my whole circle to win. Yeah. So it's like, what can I do to be a conduit to help your growth? Like, how can I, you know, pay off my parents' house or alleviate some stress that they might have or certain things like that? And that requires the next level in the video game. It does. You know? It really does. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I, I have similar thoughts without going into too much detail of like, what can I do to, to help this person, that person? And all it really requires is just turning on the afterburners. Yeah. And, and just and, and just keep keep rolling. Yeah. Like, that's like, all we, we, we were do. talking about it today and it's like, it's like, man, I've, I've been so excited moving to Newport and like, you know, we're rolling with the car group two, three times a week, like still grinding my face off, but it's like need, like need to put that much more effort and focus into it because there's so much big, big stuff happening, projects, deal flow. There's so much big stuff happening out here. It's like, damn, I got to work weekends again. I got to work over. Like I, like I'm a big rituals guy. Like I have my, I'm in bed by a certain time. I wake up at a certain time. I do the same things every single day. And I've had to break the rituals coming out here because I made it, I had to make a promise to myself. If I want better results, I want to go to that next threshold, that next level, that, that F you type of income. Mm -hmm. It's like, I have to break my rules about going to bed at nine o'clock. Cause I might not network with this person. I might not meet that person. So I threw a lot of my handbook out my playbook that I used to keep me dialed in and grounded. So like being out here, like I'm not anxious, but I'm running at a hundred miles an hour and I'm saying yes to a lot of, not everybody that reaches out, but higher level meetings and things like that. Yeah. So it's like, bro, I'm running a hundred miles an hour since I moved out here. We're like, it's nice, but like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a blitz I'm doing right now. Like I yeah. have to do what I have to do. Like I'm the new guy on the block. Everyone's interested in what I have going on, et cetera. That's going to fizzle off at some point. Right. So you have to do that push. Um, but yeah, I'm in like massive growth stage ever since coming out to I love California. That. It's so fun. I mean, it is taxing for sure, but being, you just got to stay grounded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being in that, in that phase is so cool. I love hearing that. So what are, what are you doing, uh, on the front of your advertising firm that sort of helps separate you guys and what are you doing with the business to help scale it? Right now. Yeah, that's a great question. So truth be told, when you own a marketing agency, it is so hard to market yourself because as you're growing, like we've grown 30 to 300% year over year for eight years now. We've never not grown over that's 30%, wild. which yeah. which I'm super grateful for. I've spent zero money on marketing. Wow. I've never done an ad. 
we've never paid for this or paid for that. Like we've done, you know, our PR team's gotten us some articles here and there, which is in-house, like their, their employees. And we've done some local SEO, which is in-house, right? So um, we're getting ready to launch for the first time ads, our offer funnels, like the whole gambit. Oh, you're about uh, to go hard. Oh, dude, we went through, yeah, we went through the whole Alex Hermosi. I, I, you know, read the obviously $100 million offers, $100 million leads. We invested, I, I say we, I'm the only investor. I invested heavily <laughs> back into the company. I would say about nine months ago, probably, I would say between a hundred to $200,000 back into, and that's co at cost, right? So it'd be yeah. 600K for a client. Yeah. We rebuilt the brand through and through the branding, marketing collateral, did 90 days of social media posts. Like I'm talking like the most stellar designs I've ever seen. We've built funnels, we've built ad campaigns, we've built we're building out a sales team. Like we're going at this thing full force. Cause I'm like, okay, if we can get to a, like we got into a multi seven figure agency with no ads, no marketing, no anything, the numbers we're looking at now with like funnels and ads and opt-ins and the sales team. I'm like, this is kind of scary. Like this is yeah, gonna, you're this scratching is, the surface. If you haven't this, advertised yet, like you haven't done anything. And our team's like a little nervous because like, you know, uh, like we're upwards of 20 team members, but like on every single call, there's roughly like, I would say 10 to 12, you know, of us all on the same calls, et cetera, but you know, totals around 20 ish. And like, you know, the 10 or 12 people that are just like, man, things are going to change. Like this team, these zoom calls are going to be way bigger. Like, like thankfully, like we have a, a phenomenal HR specialist who handles our entire HR department. Like, so it's like, it's going more in the corporate realm without it being super robotic, but like, yeah, like changing all of our HR policies around and looking at benefits and all, all these different things. Um, but yeah, we're getting ready to launch our first offer in about 60 days. So one of our top service offerings is SEO. So Eventive is broken up into two verticals. We have the brand building vertical and the brand growth vertical. So let's just say uh, a franchise company has come to us and um, sales have gone down in half their locations. They would come to the agency and we would bring them through the brand building phase. And we would basically, you know, it's called a brand workshop. It's a three day, super intensive strategy session where we rip apart their business, interview their stakeholders and figure out what's going on in their market. What's going on with the competitors, what's going on with the ideal customers. We then rebuild them about a 75, eh, 60 to 75 page strategy deck for the next 20 years. Where, what's the vision? Where are we going? Who's the ideal customer? What's the marketing campaigns? This is where we're going. We then help them with the rebranding. We build them a new custom website. Uh, and then that's all a part of the brand building phase. We do that with a variety of different industries, a variety of different types of clients. And then we have the brand growth phase. That's everything from paid advertising to SEO, to content marketing, uh, PR, et cetera. The offer we're doing though is SEO is our number one service offering. We're, we're one of the top agencies in the country right now for, for SEO. Like mm -hmm. we do a stellar job, but everyone says SEO is very slow. Oh, it takes a while to rank and SEO is slower than paid traffic. I reverse engineered and I've tested it on a couple clients. I tested it on ourselves. We're going to blitz scale and I won't go into full detail in case there's competitors listening, but we're going to full blitz scale and do six months of SEO in 90 days. Are you going to go hard at yeah, it? Yeah. So yeah. not just SEO, like our typical client, you know, when we bring them a tons of leads through SEO, we could easily double, triple a business in a year. If they don't know how to sell to that person, they don't have a sales script. They don't know how to talk to them and they give pricing over the phone. They're not getting them a complimentary, complimentary schedule to come in or an appointment to come in and they're, they're selling them on the phone. So dude, this program, we're, we're launching it for 10 grand. It's a $95,000 program. We're building out their ideal customers for them, training their entire sales team on it. We're building them out an entire lead gen system. We're building out all of the, the CRM, HubSpot, giving them training guides on that, all the sales scripts, continuity programs. They're getting all of the sales and marketing system built for 10 grand. We already have a waiting list. We haven't even launched that's, it. That's actually like, normally when I hear someone talk about like, an advertising package or like offering something i'm like yeah it kind of sounds like bullshit. but 10 grand for all of that stuff i'm low-key gonna plug you right now like that's i appreciate actually the, really good value you want to know what the funny thing is What's that? is if we don't get certain results within 90 days we work for free so i'm guaranteed even better it. even better so, dude that's awesome alex ramosi says like you have to make an offer so good you'd be stupid or dumb not to do it yeah people are going to feel stupid for not signing up yeah yeah that's awesome because to, to get all of that the infrastructure and to have operable SEO and lead flow. Cause what I've learned in my business, it's all leads. Yeah. Like, yes. I mean, at this point, after doing it for a decade, a lot of referrals and for sure, et cetera. But, but that fizzles out for the typical business real estate, yeah. as we know, is it's a lot of referrals, but like for med spas, for gyms, for, 
you know, I was, I just went to my cosmetic dentist and he's, you know, he's got celebrities that back him and influencers that back him. Like I posted him everywhere. He's got guys with millions of followers that roll in on a Wednesday and post them, but that's feast or famine. If you're not doing SEO, you're not running ads, you're not doing the typical marketing and you're just relying on referrals and people to post you, you're not going to get to the promised land. No, you're and not. And we've been doing you're this not. for our clients. We've never done it for ourselves. So like, um, you know, you asked the question earlier, like for agencies, it just takes a while to build a big enough team to where some of the team is in house. Cause it took me having, I want to say 15 people before I was ever able to hire anyone for just Aventive. So I have team, I have set full salary employees that only touch Aventive now, it, but it takes a while to get to, right? Our yeah. payroll for this year, we're looking at, it's like 975,000. Yeah. It's crazy. Just bro. in payroll. Yeah. That's not even taxes. That's not even payroll taxes, et cetera. You know, fixed costs. That's just payroll. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it literally just takes, it just takes time. Yeah. But yeah, what, what are you saying? Leads are the lifeblood it's of the oxygen any business. that we all breathe. It's literally without lead flow, you die. And it doesn't matter whether you're going out and knocking on people's doors to get leads. Like I still do to this day yeah. every once in a while, or I'm sitting in open house. All of that is just to generate lead flow. So yeah. to invest... Well, and if Money you, into it, yeah, like, if you think of like the book E-Myth uh, and some of those, you know, some of those books, it's like you're the baker and you're the best baker in the world. But when you go open up your bake shop, you're not a baker anymore. You're the accountant. You're the lawyer. You're the marketing team. You're the sales team. Most business owners don't really know what it takes to get a business off the ground. Like our agency is really big in the health and wellness and medical aesthetic space, right? Mm -hmm. So you typically have like your injector or your, you know, someone, someone like that, um, you know, nurse background, et cetera, that goes and starts a med spa. And they're like, oh crap, like I have to hire three more people. I need to learn this. I need to do that. So, you know, my background is consulting. I did that for a number of years. So, you know, to date, I've probably built close to 450 seven to nine figure brands. So I get the unit economics of almost every industry, every business model. Do you know how long it took me to learn that? Like I had to fail and fail and fail and fail and stop doing this company. The typical business owner doesn't know what they're getting into. Yeah. They just don't want to keep working for the boss that they hate. Yes. And then when you get into it, you're like, oh my gosh, I barely have time for my husband. I don't even, I can't even fathom researching late at night how to get leads or how to do SEO. So what they do is they trust all these contractors and freelancers and all these people that say they can do everything under the sun for, I'll build you a website for two grand. Get out of here. That will get you to like from here to here. It's not going to get you to the 50, 100, 150,000 a month that a lot of these businesses need to survive, right? Yeah. So what got you here is not going to get you there. So it's great to start with those people. But honestly, like the typical client we have has gotten really burned by agencies, by contractors, by freelancers. So dude, our sales process is a little bit longer for those types of people that have been burned. And thankfully, like I have a strong personal brand. I have a lot of relationships, a lot of network. And they're like, dude, you just need to call bowls. It might be it might be 25 or 30% more than what your typical spending, but he will literally get it done right. And he'll never come back and ask for more money. If we ever go over cost or we ever, if we underquoted a project, that's on us for not understanding the needs, right? So yeah. I don't go back to a client. If like we're losing money on a website, I'm not gonna be like, Hey, Brian, we need five grand more. Like our team didn't do their job. I eat that cost. Yeah. Not many other agencies do that. No, no. And not, I mean, I deal with contractors all the time because I'm yeah. doing flips and, and stuff like yeah. that. Very few people will do that. For sure. But yeah. it's my name on the on on the building, right? It's my brand name. And like I'm building Aventive to be a you know two hundred million dollar agency before I don't ever see myself exiting or anything like that. But like I want to have a hundred to two hundred million dollar agency because my mission and, and just to go on a tangent for a second, like my mission and purpose, I can't stand when businesses don't know how to grow. I can't stand when businesses don't know how to operate. I feel like they make us all look bad. I can't stand when agencies screw people over. I can't stand when contractors and freelancers blackball people. They, they do illegal work. They, they, they're, they're making us all look bad. So I know that if I can build my personal brand in the agency and be the largest branding and marketing agency in the world, what's that going to do? It's going to force all my competitors to level up. What's that going to do? Out of all, like, let's just say 70% of businesses in America are using agencies. If I'm the leader of the entire pack. And I'm, I'm saying that this is our quality. You have to meet it or you're not going to be in the game. It's going to force everyone to level up. And then guess what happens? If we're servicing a couple million businesses around the country and everyone's getting better quality service, better marketing, better lead flow, what does that do to our local economy? Yeah. So if you look at it from that standpoint, 
I'm changing hundreds of millions of people's lives over a, an extended period of time. So it's like, that's what I'm after. It's not like the leads and the this and the that. It's like, how can I literally, when I'm on my deathbed, my kids or grandkids are saying like, my dad was John Bowles. Yeah. My grandpa's John Bowles. He did this. And when yeah. I leave this planet, it's changing the game for entrepreneurship. Cause every teacher told me that entrepreneurs are losers. They're yeah. failures, they're yeah. college dropouts, they're this. And I literally want to be the face of that. I think that I could change this world. And that's why I'm investing so much time and so much energy and so much passion in Eventive. Like we hit eight years old next week and I've poured my blood, sweat and tears into it because I truly believe, and some of my advisors that are on the agency, they've exited for 40, $50 million. And they've, they obviously consult us every quarter. And they're like, dude, you're not like your numbers and how you run your company light years ahead of anything we ever did. He's like, if you just keep going and going and going and doubling down and doubling down, he's like, it might take five or six more years. He's like, but you will own a massive piece of this market. Yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. That's I know sick. that was a tangent, but no, I love it. It's, it's great to hear other people's visions because it, it, frankly, if you're someone who's a performer and you're around someone else who's performing and you're hearing how big you're thinking, yeah, then you have to ask yourself like, Oh shoot! How could I apply this to my business, and 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 create a a, a bigger vision than what you have right now? Yeah. Because like I've always like my my vision has always been big, but hearing you articulate that is awesome, and it makes you think outside of just the day to day business of like oh how can I close more sales? How can I close more sales? No, how can I offer the best possible service? Which we do, but it can also be yeah. always improved upon that is going to force everybody else in the market to change. And I love that. Like I didn't, I didn't even realize that that is exactly what I want to do, but that's what our path is. And that's what I want to do. So yeah, I, I love hearing that. The, the question is like, why not? Why the fuck not? Why not? You? Like literally why not? Why not? why not me? Why not them? Like why, why not? Yeah. And, and it most... is, it is also our time. Like I think we're like somewhat close in age. I'm 30, but like, I'm around there. Yeah, okay, I'm 36. We'll go, we'll go, okay. So, okay, so within within six years. I mean, I feel like once you turn 30, it all kind of starts falling Yeah, I get made fun of because I'm the oldest of the group. They call me a boomer right now. But yeah. I, I do not look 36 years old. So That's I'll leave funny. it at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's that shift right now in time where, like, the main players in a lot of the fields are starting to age out. They it's are. Particularly, not just age, but just how fast markets are changing. Like you really have to be on top of it and pushing and spending, especially particularly to the real estate market right now. There's half as many deals to go around for agents. Yeah. So if especially in California with the mansion tax and everything else, especially in California. So if you're not on the absolute like precipice, if you're not at the top and you're not spending aggressively and like really trying to grow and make impact, yeah. you're out. Like. People are eating your lunch and you're either phasing out or you're taking market. And there's really not a whole lot in between. Dude, and, that, and that's the only thing that keeps me up at night, right? Like, you know, I don't, I have a lot more on my plate, but I wouldn't say I'm more stressed just because like I have the most amazing team. I have a great leadership team. I have great yeah. mentors. I have a great advisement team, financial team, et cetera. But it keeps me up at night that we're not advertising. We're not marketing. We provide such a great service. And I still go places and I'm like, oh, I've never heard of Aventive. Oh, I've never heard of Credi. I'm like, oh, it, it makes my to. blood boil <laughs> yeah. because I own a marketing agency. So it's like, it's like, I always said years ago, man, if someone just invested 10 million into me as a brand, but it's like, I was like, you know what? I don't need funding. I'll just do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that outlook though. We're, we're in that like phase right now of just testing so many different marketing methods. And I like what you're offering to people because the fact that it can be refunded or whatever it is, even if it's, it's yeah. just 10 grand, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars well, it's, it's on funny. stuff that doesn't work. It's funny because you like, don't know this, but we had a conversation about you. It was like, Oh, do you think you could help, you know, such and such with, with yeah. marketing or SEO? And I was like, to be honest, like, like we know the market well, but like, I don't want him to waste his money. Like it's probably not the best fit. And I turned Ooh. away. That could have been, you could have been paying us five, six grand a month, et cetera, et cetera. And six months down the road, I would have said, Hey Shane, like, sorry. Like it just didn't work out. Yeah. You know how many people would say yes to that and do a quick cash grab for 30 K 50 K I looked at the market, looked yeah. at the business and I was like, this is not our ideal customer. Yeah. We are not the best at this. Yeah. We've, I I've been through it so many times now that I just am 
it's kind of at the point now where I'm actually just kind of spearheading our own um, paid advertisements. Yeah, because there, is there, awesome. there are no real estate aid, uh, like advertising agencies that have really cracked the code. Yeah. I've worked with all of them. Oh, a lot of them become traditional. Then they get into real estate. Like every advisor that's exited from companies that like I advise with me, like they've all gotten into real estate because they had to sign non-competes in the agency world. <laughs> so like the two, the two industries are very close together. Yeah. So like we're, we're now running our own, just kind of like uniquely made advertisements and they're finally starting to work. Heck yeah. Like they're, we finally cracked a piece of the code and then maybe down the line, like I love scaling out other businesses. Maybe we'll offer that product to other people because we've talked about whether it's a, a coaching education, which is huge branding, right which is massive right now. I, I'm starting to toy with the idea. Okay. If these ads really do work, yeah. if we can kind of teach people the infrastructure and give them the ability so, to run ads, it's kind of like what you're doing so except I'm, just for real estate agents. Yeah. So I'm going to do something similar. So I'm, I'm in the process. Not many people know this, but I'm in the process of doing a, a massive content push. Okay. Like just going straight value videos, not, you know, obviously I've posted the cars, the houses, like truth be told, that just brings in a lot of revenue for credit. It's not because I want to look cool in a McLaren or a Lambo. Like it actually brings in some pretty big deals and referral agents of guys yep. that, that want to drive this and want to be me or look like this. And they come in and they become a referral agent and they're bringing in five, 10 leads a month. And I'm splitting, you know, commission with them or 30 or 40% of whatever, you know, I'm paying them. Now they're making four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, nine, 10 grand a month. Um, which is pretty cool, but I'm going to do a massive content push of just straight value, straight value. And then what's going to happen is that's going to a year from now turn into long form copy on YouTube and then growing the following on YouTube is then going to turn into subscription offer, like a, a school for agencies. So if you want to grow a six figure marketing agency, having owned one at that point for 10 years, we've done, you know, over eight figures in revenue. Like I have a lot of social proof in the agency realm. I'll teach you how to get the six figures in under 90 days for $9.99. You want to get the seven figures, it's $19.99. You want to get to eight figures, the $10 million agency, yeah, it's $29.99. Yeah. And we're just going to pump as much traffic to those pages as possible. Um, I didn't create it. Amon Ghazi does it and yeah. crushes it on YouTube. He's got the fastest growing YouTube channel in the history of YouTube, I believe. Don't don't at me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's what one of my longer term plays is, is to actually building out a school called the Academy. I love that. I think that it, it makes a lot more sense when courses get a lot of hate. Education gets a lot of hate because it, it deserves it for a lot of the piece. But yeah. if you've actually done what you're teaching people, for there's sure. a lot of value. Like I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars on advertising, whether it's agencies or my own advertising. I've wasted so much time on bad leads or bad business structure in real estate. So like when people come and they join my firm, like I might not be the cheapest commission split in the world. Yeah. But I've already made all the mistakes that it saved which you so is, much which money. Is to the right person. It's, it's, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like have all of the money, all of the time. Like I now know the exact formula. If yeah. you, if you want to make a million dollars in real estate, just as a starting point, yeah, like follow I my have, steps. I have the exact playbook. Like it, I've seen it. Yeah. I've done it A to fucking Z. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally with you. Like if you've done something and there's value behind it, I believe in education when and, you're and see, and I love courses and education. Cause that's, that's my credit card processing company's biggest market. We work with all the coaches, all the influencers that oh, Stripe, really? <laughs> cause Stripe locks up your funds for six months. Like we have coaches that Stripe locked up a, I don't want to say names, but Stripe locked up a million yeah. dollars of, of their money and they couldn't make payroll Holy or shit. because it's not. So anything that's not a main industry is considered high risk in the yeah. payment processing and financial fintech world. So for instance, like being an influencer and making money off that being a celebrity, having brand, like unless it's a product that is in a main industry, like let's just say a celebrity wants to launch a cosmetic brand. That is a main industry. But if a celebrity wants to launch a business coaching course or a life coaching or courses or all these different things, you are not accredited PhD. You don't have a Wikipedia page. Like you're not this credited source. So until you're at that level, your industry and yourself are not deemed as low risk. 
So the majority of the merchants that we work with are all super high risk and they're influencers and coaches and they're reaching out to me. They're like, Bulls, like I, I heard you one, have the cheapest pricing, but two, someone told me like you were able to get their million dollars unlocked because you knew the bank and you were able to do this, this and that. Like, can you help me out? And it's, it, word just got out. So like we work with tons of coaches. That's sick, dude. That's awesome. Love those businesses. I love all of your insights. This has been epic. So many nuggets of Appreciate knowledge it. for all of the listeners, myself included. Uh, let's go drive these cars around. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Appreciate you, Thanks, man. Sean.